because all of the stars are formed within extended regions of higher density in the interstellar medium. Although the density is still lower than the inside of an earthly vacuum chamber, these regions are called molecular clouds and consist mostly of hydrogen, with about 23 to 28 percent helium and a few percent heavier elements. One example of such a star forming region is the Orion Nebula. As massive stars are formed from molecular clouds, they also ionize the hydrogen, creating an HII region. The amount of light a star emits depends on how much nuclear fuel is being consumed and on whether any of the emitted light can escape the surface of the star. The light a star emits during its lifetime will change. When a star exhausts its nuclear fuel, it can expand and become a red giant, or it can collapse and become a black hole. There is lots known about stars and the life they evolved through. Oftentimes you may associate blue with freezing, or red with hot, but with stars it's exactly the opposite. Blue stars are the hottest, with their surfaces sometimes exceeding 50,000 Fahrenheit. Yellow stars, like the Sunday, are cooler, but still very hot. Their surfaces reach about 9,932 Fahrenheit. Red stars are the coolest, with their surfaces sometimes less than 5,000 Fahrenheit. The biggest and brightest stars are the hottest. Some of the big ones can grow to be over 100 times the size of Sun. Their surface temperature can exceed 90,000 Fahrenheit. This heat makes them blue in color, or sometimes even white. Stars of different colors and temperatures last for different periods of time. Blue and white stars are the ones with the most fuel, but they use it up quickly only lasting a few billion years before they run out. The yellow stars, similar to the Sunday, last about 10 billion years before they run out of fuel. The small, red stars last the longest over thousands of billions of years. When a star runs out of fuel, it swells up into a red giant or a supergiant. These large stars are very cool because their cores are no longer producing fuel. A protostar is what you have before a star forms. A protostar is a collection of gas that has collapsed down from a giant molecular cloud. The protostar phase of stellar evolution lasts about 100,000 years. Over time, gravity and pressure increase, forcing the protostar to collapse down. A T Tauri star is stage in a star's formation and evolution right before it becomes a main sequence star. This phase occurs at the end of the protostar phase. The gravitational pressure holding the star together is the source of all its energy. The majority of all stars in our galaxy, and even the universe, are main sequence stars. Our Sunday is a main sequence star, and so are our nearest neighbors, Sirius and Alpha Centauri A. Main sequence stars can vary in size, mass and brightness, but they're all doing the same thing converting hydrogen into helium in their cores, releasing a tremendous amount of energy. When a star has consumed its stock of hydrogen in its core, fusion stops and the star no longer generates an outward pressure to counteract the inward pressure pulling it together. A shell of hydrogen around the core ignites continuing the life of the star, but causes it to increase in size dramatically. When a star has completely run out of hydrogen fuel in its core and it lacks the mass to force higher elements into fusion reaction, it becomes a white dwarf star. The outward light pressure from the fusion reaction stops and the star collapses inward under its own gravity. Red dwarf stars are the most common kind of stars in the universe. These are main sequence stars but they have such low mass that they're much cooler than stars like our Sunday. They have another advantage. Red dwarf stars are able to keep the hydrogen fuel mixing into their core, and so they can conserve their fuel for much longer than other stars. Neutron stars If a star has between 1.35 and 2.1 times the mass of the Sunday, it doesn't form a white dwarf when it dies. Instead, the star dies in a catastrophic supernova explosion. 
and the remaining core becomes a neutron star. As its name implies, a neutron star is an exotic type of star, that is composed entirely of neutrons. The largest stars in the universe are supergiant stars. These are monsters with dozens of times the mass of the Sun and like a relatively stable star like the Sun. Supergiants are consuming hydrogen fuel at an enormous rate, and will consume all the fuel in their cores within just a few million years. Stage 1 dash stars are born in a region of high-density nebula, and condenses into a huge globule of gas and dust and contracts under its own gravity. Stage 2 A region of condensing matter will begin to heat up and start to glow forming protostars. If a protostar contains enough matter the central temperature reaches 15 million degrees centigrade. Stage 3 dash at this temperature, nuclear reactions in which hydrogen fuses to form helium can start. Stage 4 dash the star begins to release energy, stopping it from contracting even more and causes it to shine. It is now a main sequence star. Stage 5 A star of one solar mass remains in main sequence for about 10 billion years, until all of the hydrogen has fused to form helium. Stage 6 The helium core now starts to contract further, and reactions begin to occur in a shell around the core. Stage 7 The core is hot enough for the helium to fuse to form carbon. The outer layers begin to expand, cool and shine less brightly. The expanding star is now called a red giant. Stage 8 dash The helium core runs out, and the outer layers drift of away from the core as a gaseous shell. This gas, that surrounds the core is called a planetary nebula. Stage 9 dash The remaining core is now in its final stages. The core becomes a white dwarf the star eventually cools and dims. When it stops shining, the now dead star is called a black dwarf.